A correct mandibulomaxillary fixation technique is the key to successfully establishing or preserving dental occlusion in facial trauma and reconstructive and orthognathic surgery. The use of arch bars, Ernst ligatures, IMF screws, and plates and screws are the most common techniques for mandibulomaxillary fixation in dentate patients. The objectives of this presentation are to show the basic techniques and the errors and complications of these techniques. Arch bars are still the first choice for mandibulomaxillary fixation because of their universal capacity in all indication categories. Arch bars are preferred for temporary fragment stabilization in emergency cases before definitive treatment as a tension band in combination with rigid internal fixation, for long-term fixation in conservative treatment, and for fixation of avulsed teeth and alveolar crest fractures. There are important points to consider before starting. The occlusion must be checked. In the case of orthognathic disturbances such as a deep bite deformity, it may be impossible to use arch bars and there should be calculable tension forces on both bars, so the hooks should be symmetrically positioned in the upper and lower jaw. This symmetry is essential for functional training with elastics. Other points are, if arch bars are used for long-term immobilization, the teeth have to be fluoridated to prevent demineralization, and the risk of contamination from infected patients must also be considered if arch bars are used. The instruments needed are two wire cutters, two wire twisters, and a gauze packer. Before inserting the arch bars, the occlusion is checked. There should be full interdigitation of the teeth with regular contacts. Fluoridation takes place before starting the arch bar fixation to prevent demineralization. The prefabricated arch bar must be adjusted in shape and length to each specific situation. The arch bar should not damage the gingiva. First, the bar is closely adapted to the dental arch. The position of the bar should be between the dental equator and the gingiva. If maximum stability is needed, the bar is cut behind molar number 7. But if less stability is sufficient, the bar can be trimmed behind premolar number 5. To fix the arch bar in place, a ligature in the premolar region of each side is first prepared. The wire ends should not damage the surrounding soft tissues. The arch bar is positioned and secured using the wire twister. In the premolar and molar regions, one end of the wire is above the arch bar and the other end below it. The wire is cut with the wire cutter. The wire ends are turned away from the gingiva to prevent damage. With experience, the wire can be twisted off at the required position.
the second arch bar is mounted in the same manner. To have calculable tension forces on both bars, the hooks must be symmetrically positioned in the upper and lower jaw. This symmetry is essential for functional training with elastics. The occlusion is established and 0.4 mm wire loops are inserted in a symmetrical fashion to connect the two arch bars. The wire ends are trimmed and bent to avoid injury to the mucosa. Finally, the jaws are immobilized in maximal intercuspidation. Functional load applied to the mandible demonstrates the stability of the system. The ligatures are easily removed. For fragment fixation before reduction, or for functional training, elastics are helpful. Arch bars support functional training using elastics if tensile forces in angle class 1, 2, or 3 are needed. To remove the arch bars is simple. After cutting off the ligatures, the bar is cut near the midline and then turned back on itself, like opening a sardine can. This procedure exposes each wire in sequence, so they can easily be cut. Any wire fragments are carefully removed. A dental probe is used to make sure that all the wire fragments are gone. Ernst ligatures are a common method of wire fixation, although it should be understood that using Ernst ligatures leads to reduced stability. The major indication for Ernst ligatures are temporary fixation until definitive operative treatment and some simple fractures. The contraindications are comminuted and displaced fractures and unstable segmented fractures. There are important points to consider before starting. The occlusion must be checked. For orthognathic disturbances, it may be impossible to use Ernst ligatures. Luxated teeth should not be included in the ligatures. The ligatures of the upper and lower jaw must be in opposite symmetric positions for correct immobilization. And there is a risk of contamination from infected patients. Instruments for the application are two wire cutters and two wire twisters. An Ernst ligature is based on two neighboring teeth in the same segment of one dental arch. If possible, premolars number four and five are used in the maxilla and mandible. A 0.4 millimeter wire of approximately 15 centimeters length is used. One end of the wire is passed through the interdental space between canine number three and premolar number four and is passed back from the palatal to the buccal side via the interdental space of premolars 4 and 5. The other end is passed between premolar number 5 and molar number 6. This end also goes through the interdental space of 4 and 5. One wire end must pass below. The other end must pass above the horizontal portion of the wire on the buccal side. The wire is then tightened with the wire twister. It is of major importance to preserve wire ends of at least 4 to 5 centimeters length. 
Ligatures are now added in the same way in the other three sections of the dental arches to form two symmetrical pairs. After assuring correct occlusion, the wire ends of each pair of ligatures are twisted together with the wire twisters. Care must be taken at this point not to break the wires, otherwise the procedure would have to be started again. The wire ends are then cut and bent towards the dental surface to protect the oral mucosa. Additional stabilization can be obtained by using methamethacrylate to reinforce the ligature. Monomer is put into two mixing containers. Polymer is added to one of these containers so that it's moistened by the monomer. A spatula is used to mix the two until they become a paste. The methamethacrylate is placed around the wire to protect the gingiva from thermal injury and to make removal of the wire easy. Monomer is used for the final molding. Functional load brought to the mandible shows the degree of stability the system has. If complete immobilization is not tolerated, or if less stability is needed, elastics can be inserted. To accommodate elastics, the wire ends are bent together to form little hooks. The elastics are then inserted around these hooks. Ernst ligatures are easy to remove. Bone supported devices. The use of IMF screws and plates with screws for mandibulomaxillary immobilization are considered to be a reserve method. Indications are emergency cases, in contagious patients, or as an alternative if arch bars cannot be applied. Individual indications are simple fracture patterns and orthognathic and reconstructive surgery. Contraindications where bone-supported devices should not be used, are in severely comminuted and displaced fractures, in unstable, segmented fractures, or in children, if tooth buds are still in place. Before starting, the position of the tooth roots and the infraorbital and mandibular nerves must be checked. The position of the screws should be symmetrical from jaw to jaw. It must be mentioned that the position of the screws may interfere with the usual operative approach or internal fixation devices. Long-term immobilization is not recommended because of the injuries to the mucosa. The use of IMF screws and so-called hanger plates will be shown. IMF screws are made of stainless steel. They're self-drilling and self-tapping. The screw head is elongated and contains two holes in a cruciform configuration for wire placement.
a 2.4 screwdriver with holding sleeve. Wire cutters and wire twisters are also needed. Various IMF screw placement patterns exist and are dictated by where the fracture is located. The field of application is limited by the position of the mandibular nerve, the position of the infraorbital nerve, and the tooth roots. For correct placement, IMF screws must be located superior to the maxillary tooth roots and inferior to the mandibular tooth roots, and are either lateral or medial to the long axis of the canine roots. A more lateral approach gives increased lateral stability and greater control over the posterior open bite, but it runs an increased risk of complications. The self-drilling and self-tapping screws can be introduced directly through the mucosa. Care has to be taken that the screw head does not compress the gingiva when fully seated. Two more IMF screws are inserted on the opposite side. Mandibulo-maxillary fixation is performed with 0.4 millimeter wires. The wire ligature is wrapped around the screw head grooves. Before tightening the wires, correct occlusion has to be established. The wire is tightened either at the superior or inferior screw head to prevent soft tissue damage. Another wire is placed on the other side, this time through the hole in the upper screw and around the lower screw. For more stability, wiring in an X pattern can be added. The results reveal some problems. Tightening the wires may create a posterior open bite, but additional IMF screws or Ernst ligatures placed on the posterior dentition may prevent or correct this condition. Over-tightening the wires can also lead to lateral rotation of the fragment, which, however, can be prevented at the inferior border. There may be a lack of stability due to the elasticity of the long wires. Alternatively, plates and screws can be used as a bone-supported device. From a 2.0 adaption plate, pieces of two-hole length are cut for the maxilla and usually pieces of three holes for the mandible. These pieces are bent away from the bone and monocortically fixed with 6 mm long, 2 mm screws. After establishing the occlusion, mandibulo-maxillary fixation is done with 0.4 mm wires. Here, too, there may be a lack of stability because of the elasticity of the long wires. To summarize, Arch bars are still the first choice due to their universal capacity in all indication categories. In emergency cases and certain individual indications, Ernst ligatures, IMF screws, and plates and screws can be an alternative. Bone-supported devices need precise planning because of the risk that they may damage adjacent tissues.